Hi guys and thanks again for joining me on another episode of Sealed for Good. Today I'm going to talk about the cooler months. Now we're into these winter periods, we're going to talk about the difference between the types of liquid membranes you can use during the cooler months, particularly uh, one component liquid membrane water based versus a cementitious system. And the reason why you might favour one over the other and how you can use them. So firstly, many of you would know this, cooler months present many, many challenges. I know that many of you will be saying that a lot of your clients don't realise that, they just want you to get out there and do the job, whatever the conditions are, but you cannot battle with the gods, and so when the weather starts to become cooler and damper and wetter, you are restricted in what you can use. And this also impacts the surfaces that we bond to, what we go over. So when you've got a cool ambient condition, and when we talk about ambient, that's the air around us that is always going to play a part in the way membranes will cure and actually form. Surface temperature is even more important and when you read data sheets, one thing I'll bring to your attention, we put it on our uh, data sheets for Gripset, I know many of our uh, competitors out there do the same, the better ones out there, it refers to surface temperature. So if it says that you can put a product on a surface at 10 degrees, you might have ambient conditions at a 10, but the surface overnight could be zero, and that could have actual ice or freeze-thaw conditions in there. So you need to take that into account, particularly those of you in the southern parts of the country, Perth, Adelaide, Victoria, southern parts of New South Wales, ACT, that is gonna happen, and, and also Sydney. Our friends up in Queensland and Northern Territory don't get this as much, but it always comes about, so you need to be aware of that. And the, if you've got a damp surface, because the cold conditions with dew, etc., will create dampness in the surface, and they are going to impact or prevent the application of a liquid membrane onto that substrate. So the risks that you've got when you're putting liquid membranes onto those sort of surfaces is that you've got prolonged drying times and curing times. That's number one. So even when the surface is dry enough or at the right temperature, the cool ambient conditions are going to prolong the curing time. They can also cause blistering in membranes, which many of you would have seen. Uh, particularly, and a lot of people think that happens in the, in the summertime when you get the sun out in the membrane, but it also happens in winter where you do get those uh, rays of sunshine coming out and you've got a damp substrate because you've got vapours and moisture in the concrete slab or the screed trying to evaporate. It prevents the membrane film from developing. This is the most important part because a membrane, all membranes are developed, and without going to a chemistry lesson here, they have a curing phase and that's where the film is formed. And the temperature has a lot to do with that. And there's a scope, but when you go either side of that scope, either in really, really hot conditions, it can fry the, fry the product, or really cold conditions, you can have the opposite effect, but the membrane film doesn't develop. And then what happens is you walk away from the job, you think you've done the job well, and the product will just go to mush. And so that can impact it, and I've seen that in some extreme conditions in the Victorian Alps, and also over in New Zealand, where I've been down in Queenstown, we've been doing projects where it's very, very cold, and what it can do to even some of the membranes that are designed to go off in cold conditions, which I'll talk about later. The other part is you see cracking in membrane. A lot of the times, your client might ring you up and say, I've seen a crack in the film, the membrane film, what's going on here? It's actually the cold that can impact the membrane film forming, and you get that crazing effect, and, that's, and you get a surface cracking, and that actually does create an issue when you have that, when you're confronted with those cold conditions, you've got increased risks of softening, re-emulsification because the film hasn't formed, because it takes longer, morning dew, rain, etc. It's going to impact the membrane film. And this is the same with, uh, I, I did mention about the, the southern parts of Australia, but those of you up in, in north, and also remember the humidity. Even though you might have warm conditions or you can have cold conditions, you can still have high humidity in cold conditions, and that will also impact the membrane. And what happens there with water-based materials, you get a slower rate of diffusion where the moisture is evaporated or absorbed, and that's going to impact the, the, uh, the way that the membrane forms. And when you've got saturated conditions of humidity in the ambient surface and on the surface conditions of the substrate you're going to, then you've really got a, the, the worst case scenario where the membrane can't form. And so you need to be aware of that and what your options are. Cementitious membranes. I'm going to briefly go into this because I don't know why in this country we deem cementitious systems as a lower quality, and that is not the case. Europe has been built on cementitious systems, high quality cementitious systems, 
stuff that we don't even see in this country because the standards are so much stricter over there with that. But high performance, handle all the conditions you're confronted with and the great durability. And I'm going to go into a little bit of this because I'm a bit passionate about cementitious products if they're used in the right way, like everything, they've got a place. Cementitious systems provide a, a really good alternative to the uh, one component liquid products in the cold and cooler conditions. And a lot of contractors tend to think that if they've used cement-based systems, particularly because our country is warm many months of the year, they use them externally or in warm conditions and they don't like it because it tends to skin or go off quickly. Cementitious products will always cure through hydration. It's a little bit different. So cement hydrates and so it absorbs the water in the, in the system and that's how it dries and functions. If you've got a two component or you've got a powder product that's got a polymer in there, that polymer will slow that down but still that's the, same, that's the chemical process is through hydration. And so if you've had experiences with cement based systems in the warm conditions, it's not the case when it's in the cooler conditions and you actually find it's quite the opposite. It gives you a greater working time and it's a product that can give you a lot of advantages in those cooler conditions because you've got increased workability. So you might find your pot life as on the data sheet is right on the money where, they've, where it's been suggested by the manufacturer. You've got su superior curing abilities because the fact is it will cure through the hydration process. In very cold conditions it will still be a little bit slower but it won't be as slow as a one part liquid membrane because it the, the cement based product, well the cement has to hydrate and it will take the water out of the system to dry. And the other big one is its ability to be applied over a damp surface and for the fact that it doesn't blister. That's a big advantage because cement based systems have a more durable feel about them and when they, when they dry and their films forming very rare you'll get a blistered membrane with a cement based product whereas you would with a really high flexible one component product on a damp screed. And the other piece is you've got um, greater resilience very early on. And so what I like about cement based products, particularly when they're exposed outside, if you get rain, you get dew, the fact is that those um, exposures to moisture or any, any sort of um, water content early on the piece has very, very little effect on the cement based system as it would on some of the one component products in the marketplace like a water based polyurethane, SBR or an acrylic. So important to, to actually take note of that and be aware of it. And those of you who used it, you can take note of it. Even if you uh, have applied any cement based product down, you can actually put a little bit out on a, on a surface that might just be a bit of board, leftover board, and you actually see what happens when you, after an hour, when you sort of wring a sponge out on it and you see what the water does to that product after that membrane has been forming. You might see that it could give it a bit of a water stain, but it actually won't soften the product, and that's a big advantage of it. And the other piece is this durability. It's just a, a phenomenal durable product, cement based systems for things like tiling applications, even if you've got, a lot of people use our products like our C1P in underground applications because the fact is it's got great workability and in those retaining wall situations where you just get dampness, shade and no warmth on there, it will dry and when you actually come up above the soil line, if you're going to texture or paint over it, there are no issues with it in terms of compatibility with paints or textures and that's a big advantage. Like anything, whether it's our product or someone else's, you need to read the data sheet. Refer to the data sheet because all the information is in there, but don't go in with a closed mind about cementitious systems being a, a no-go situation or a lower quality option. They are in fact a high quality option. I'm going to have another episode on this topic later on about uh, bond breakers and cement based systems because this whole class 1, class 2, class 3 mentality thing needs to change in Australia. I'll excite you about that one in another episode. But that is one thing about the TDS. Read that. Don't be put off by a class 2 or class 3 system with the way cement based products are. Refer to the bond breaker details, priming surface preparation and drawing. And I'll tell you right now, these winter months will be a lot smoother for you if you refer to those. We'll get you out of trouble on many, many jobs, I'm sure of it. If you've got any questions, our 1-800-650-435 number is available for tech questions to answer your help. We have a team of guys out in the marketplace are ready to help with any of your jobs and inquiries. Until next time, see you on Silver Good.